in the five, six years since this show aired that not enough has changed. Hey loves, it's back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today we're discussing Atlanta season one, episode seven. This is one of those episodes, looking back, I started to laugh, not so much because it's funny, even though there are some funny moments, more so because I was just like, how did they get away with this? But we're gonna get into it. Out of all the episodes out of season one, this is gonna be the easiest to break down. We only have one of the main character cast in it, Paperboy, as he's on this show called Montague, a spoof of Donahue. Everything about the show is a spoof and a play on the culture. There is so much context and conversation to be had on different themes. <sighs> Atlanta did what needed to be done, but at the same time, I don't think they could have done this in 2022 the way they did back in 2016 or 17. In the five, six years, a lot has changed, but not so much that needed to change. And we're gonna get all into that. <laughs> but before we do, let's just break down the plot a little bit. So this episode opens up with three commercials and I'm watching it like, oh yeah, that's right. Here are the corny spoofs. The first commercial that comes up, I'm like, what's going on? I think it was the Dodge. <laughs> and the way they advertise everything, it was for the black market, but it was saying things that you would never hear said in a commercial. That one had me looking at it sideways. The one that came up about the Arizona can and the guy's like, wait, the price is on the can. <laughs> it says 99 cents, but it's never 99 cents. I don't care what province or state or part of the planet you live in, that Arizona iced tea is never 99 cents. And I've had that conversation with people like, why does it say that? Was it 99 cents once upon a time? Because it's not today. I don't drink that stuff anyway, it's too sweet, but I thought it was so funny. <laughs> that is a very lighthearted commentary. Some of the other commercials got heavy real quick and we'll get into it. We see Paperboy in a chair like he doesn't wanna be there with another person on the panel, I don't remember her name, I'm gonna assume she's a psychologist or specialist of some sort, and then the host, Montague, who, he woke up and chose violence today, because the way he was really trying to probe and berate Paperboy, but that's how hosts are, like if you watch shows, they really are like that. They just try to be more subversive with it and it's so annoying. So I can at least give this host credit for coming out front instead of pretending to be on the side of getting to know his guests. No, he came for the smoke. <laughs> I love that at one point Paperboy's like, I'm only here because I'm getting paid. Montague's like, you're not getting paid. Paperboy's like, earn to the crowd. Ern's doing what needs to be done. As his manager, Ern needs to put Paperboy in spaces where he's gonna get more exposure. Apparently, Paperboy put some tweets out that were a little tasteless. The specialist on the panel was calling him out, like, what do you mean by this? And he was saying, I mean what I meant. I don't know why you guys are getting mad. Free speech is a thing. At first, she was very guarded. She was even going through his past lyrics and saying, what do you mean about this? It seems like you're gender neutral yourself or gender fluid. And he was like, what? It really played into how society will perceive someone's tweet as their whole personality. I don't necessarily agree with what Paper Boys said, but I can see why he said it based on his upbringing and the fact that both the host and the specialist were trying to contort what he said and also control the narrative instead of hearing him out. One thing I love about Brian Tyree Henry is his ability to share so much of emotions without saying a single word. Those facial expressions are everything. And this episode, so good. If you're not into the anthologies, those one-offs in season three, you wouldn't like this one. But I loved it simply based on his acting skills and all of the little nuances on the conversation of the culture. If you wanna watch this on surface level and just find it funny and odd and out there, you can do that. But if you wanna reach a little bit, do a gym workout like I did and you'll be ready for it. So the part we're gonna reach for next, I might be doing the most with this, is how they were so intent on really spinning Paperboy's experience. At one point, the specialist is saying, well, you're portraying and promoting a negative lifestyle. And I love that paper boy's like, no, I'm just rapping about what I observe and what I experience. That is the root of rap. And then they start to agree and the host is not having that. The specialist is like, oh yeah, that's true. And he's like, I'm not doing anything different than any other rapper or rock before then or any other music genre. It's true, even from rap's early beginnings to present day, it gets a really bad rap 
for speaking on truth. Now, nowadays, rap has evolved. It's not so much in its early roots, but essentially rap was created to express what it was like to live that lifestyle. It kind of transformed into a lot of different things nowadays. The crux of rap's infancy stage was rooted in telling a tale about what it was like to live a marginalized black experience. And I like that Paperboy pulled that because a lot of times people use that against rappers like you're portraying this and he's like what's worse society who's put me in this position or me expressing what it's like to live in that position and i think it's a question for all of us art imitating life or life imitating art then we cut to commercials and these ones were so weird it was the guy who was really talking about the natural tobacco for me and then he proceeds to cut it take it out and then you see all these other people using it so they can roll up i said yeah, these commercials are for black people. <laughs> you would never see these on any channel. There's another Dodge commercial. And I'm like, these guys are really cutting Montague a check in order for it to air through every single commercial. Another commercial that got me, but not in a funny way. I'm sure I laughed back in the day, but so much of the same thing has happened that I'm actually emotionally exhausted was when they did the tricks is for kids Coco spoof and that wolf character was trying to teeth the cereal and the kids are saying no it's for kids and then a police comes and says stop resisting I felt sick the same way I did in the episode where Ern is observing the mentally ill person being hit with a baton for spitting toilet water on the detainment officer these scenes have been replicated so much in real life from Trayvon Martin to George Floyd and everything in between and everything since that it's sickening. I know I might have found this amusing or comical at best in the past, but because of so much that I've seen and experienced and internalized, it just it reminded me in the five, six years since this show aired that not enough has changed. And when the third kid took out the camera, that's when I let out a little chuckle. Yeah, you just had to add that touch. The commercial that brought me back up a level from that was the guy from the bus. And I know for a fact, the first time I watched this years ago, I didn't remember that that dude was the same dude trying to offer Ern a Nutella sandwich. But when Homeboy in the testimonial infomercial type speech was saying, this guy changed my life, I had nothing, and now I have a truck, and I'm like, what? When he said it's green tea and Nutella sandwiches, that brought me right back up. Energy levels were elevated, my chakras were aligned, all the things he was saying, that airy fairy woo-ish. I was also secretly laughing at myself. I don't know if I admitted this to you guys before, but the Patreon pod, fam knows i used to be a huge airy fairy back in the day when this show came out i might have called that one two 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 number real quick because i was really into loa law of attraction the secret and i think it's funny that they're mocking people that are into it because it's so easy to get drawn into that mindset pun intended when your life is not going the way you want it to and i'm not going to knock anyone who believes in it because if you like it i love it i just think it's funny being on the other side looking back at how i used to view things like this and just being like why girl why sis why did you think that was a thing i stayed prayed up don't get me wrong but that whole close your eyes and envision it and manifest it and it'll be yours if that was the case, a lot of people wouldn't be hungry today and your girl wouldn't be blind, but I digress. So that one had me laughing and I was just like, you really had to pull the guy from the bus for this commercial. I wonder if Ern is gonna call him and be like, yo, I know you, give me a discount. Then we cut back to a segment and then Montague introduces a new guest. This time he's walking in the streets talking to a man who originally was known as Antoine and who wants to be called Harrison. And he's transracial. This is giving strong racial, Rachel, well, maybe fruity and slip, not racial, Rachel Dolizard. Do you remember this chick a couple years ago? She had a whole documentary about how she was black, but she's white and she's not mixed, if I'm not mistaken. I was hella confused back then and I'm still confused today. And there's a lot of celebrities that still get away with this whole, maybe they're not calling themselves black, but they're definitely proprietors of the black culture, <coughs> the Kardashians. <coughs> Why did I buy skims? <coughs> That was a mistake. Mm, there's a lot in my throat today. That's a conversation that's going to be evergreen, even though I wish we laid it to rest. Why is this a thing? Why did Harrison slash Antoine walk down the streets saying how he sees things differently now and he was wondering why he wasn't treated the way he should be and he realized I'm white. 
and now he talks to himself in the mirror and he wears his brown belt and he works two jobs that his mom said in the cutaway segment he doesn't work anywhere so i don't know what he's telling you that's why i love black moms they're not here for the ish sometimes it's not a good thing because when you're going through it they're like what are you being a suck about sometimes it's good because they don't stand for no foolishness and his mom was not playing with any of this. I was laughing when they got the specialist on who was gonna do the procedure for his transracial. We can change you to any race you desire. It's just gonna look odd. I said, I wish more surgeons were actual factual, okay? I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story. So when I was 21, maybe 22, this little left eye started going to the left, to the left, trying to be irreplaceable. And I'm like, nah, we're not having that, okay? And it wasn't even as bad as it is today because everyone who meets me today notices it, whereas back in the day, I had to point it out for people to pick it up. But I was like, no, 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 it's bad enough that I have this eye disease. I don't know how bad it's gonna get, but I don't want my eye going chameleon on me. So I went to a specialist who does surgeries to align your eyes. Things I never knew before Stargirl's disease, okay? So I go there and then this guy, fixes himself to say, yeah, we can do it. It's not covered by OHIP, which is like our general healthcare thingy. So I'd pay out of pocket. And it's only gonna last you a couple months, maybe a year before it starts going to the left as your vision worsens. Cause what's happening is your eye is trying to look to the side, to the part that hasn't died yet to focus. So as long as your disease is there and present and progressing, this is gonna keep going back to the left. So I said, you know what? I don't really want to see a surgery because technically any surgery with your eyes you're going to see. <laughs> so let me skip on that. But I loved his honesty there and I love this very rude honesty here. I just, this episode understood the assignment. It has its place in space. I don't love it necessarily, but I love what it had to say about so many different themes. I like that. Paperboy stood up for himself, but I also like that because he spoke his truth, we could come to a knowing and awareness. One thing I hate about Toronto, and I've mentioned this in my pods before, is Torontonians or maybe Canadians at large pretend like we're better than Americans, but we're hella racist too. Not me so much, but I mean us, we as a microcosm, where a lot of people I've encountered think they're holier than thou, but then when we talk, I'm like, you're really fixing yourself to say that? Really? Really? That's how you think? Or they won't say something and pretend to be an ally, whether for transgenders, putting she and her and them and he and they on their signatures or on their Instagram page, but they don't co-sign that lifestyle. Or they post a black square not knowing a black square erases the real black faces of people who were slain. It's just that kind of pretending to do something and pretending to care when you don't even do the research to know more. And further than that, because we're just, we're here, let's talk about it. I think Canadians are just as racist as Americans, they just don't speak on it as much. And I'm not condoning Paperboy's perspective, but I do appreciate that he was strong enough to share it and not back down. So we could see on that panel varying views. And at the end, the best part is, the specialist actually starts agreeing with paperboy and the host is not having it because the ratings won't go up if things are copacetic like that but what really got me was the ending when they check back in with harrison he's got that really bad wig on that paperboy is ripping him a new one for the way paperboy was going on and on and on i'm like okay fam the only thing that was worse than that was when montague was in antoine's house and they're just nodding for five minutes i'm like sir are you doing this because you want to have the nod to cut the scene or you're just both really odd and just nodding obsessively for no reason? I was just like, hey, what's going on here? I love the ending. Not only did the specialist come to an understanding with Paperboy as far as rap being the same thing as rock and any other genre that doesn't get as much slack for portraying and perpetuating, but also because when they asked Harrison the same question they asked Paperboy, he's like, hell no, I don't agree with transgender or gays or this or that. He went way over the deep end, worse than Paperboy. And the funniest part was when the specialist is like, how can you say this? You're a marginalized group. But it'd be them, eh? The people that want understanding don't give it. And I always had a hard time understanding that. I am embarrassed to say that I've been in circles where I've had to look at people sideways, like how are you saying this and you're a minority or you're a marginalized group? How can you look at somebody else knowing they're going through a struggle too and fix yourself to say? But again, 
like I said at the top of this, I'd rather someone say how they feel than pretend like they're neutral or they're accepting. And that idea that Paperboy brought up about tolerance versus acceptance is a very thin line. So much was said. We could talk about it all day. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. But this episode, you could watch, like I said, on one level and just get good laughs if you want to take it deeper. It said a lot. When we get the last round of commercials, I fell out when the guy comes out and is like, ooh, well, like, what's this guy's story who's driving the Dodge? And the old man spills all the tea with a straight face. He says, his wife ran off with his brother. He lost everything. He's going through this laundry list of badness and then says he asked to keep the car. He didn't say anything during the trial. Homeboy gets out of the car. You think he's going to be dressed in a suit classy? Ex-wife literally sued the pants right off of him. He's trying to steal gas and run back in the car and take it off. And then Dodge says at the very end, the car you keep in the divorce. And I thought that spoke so much on priorities in the community. And when you think about back then or today, especially when you're hearing all these people getting in trouble for stealing PPE and how they were flexing on the gram and Lamborghinis, like, could you be a little bit more realistic with it or no? Did you have to be that? Okay. I'm not afraid to say it, but one of the things that I wish the culture would shift is this need to flex to be a value. There is a very big problem whether you go with the Dodge narrative of the car you keep in the divorce when you should be prioritizing other things. Or like the example I said in present day with the PPEs coming back, those roosters and the FBI looking for you. Why in a time of need, when those funds could have been used for somebody who actually needed it, did people in their community, and I'm not saying just black people because there's other people too, but I'm going to speak to the community I'm a part of. Why did people think it made sense during a pandemic, a world ending phenomenon to take out these loans to flex on the gram? There needs to be a conversation there, and I think that sums up this entire episode about image, portrayal, trans, fill in the blank, whatever it is, whether it's transracial, transgressive, transgender. There's just so much there to be said about how we are viewed, how society views us, and how it's a cycle pouring into one another crazy very artfully done still not one of my favorites but still a lot to say i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did you know what to do tap the like comment down below anything you'd like to add and until next time stay safe stay sane stay blessed love and later i am so hyped though that season four is around the corner i'm still sad that this is the fourth and final season though i really hope that they pull in some characters from season one so we can get a good laugh